Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Cami, and in today's video, we're going to be setting up my 2021 bullet journal. I just want to say a good morning or good afternoon or maybe a good evening to everybody who's watching and a big thank you to all of my new subscribers and anyone who's just decided to watch this video and my previous videos. I received a lot of views and likes and really kind comments from everybody and I'm just so very grateful being a new journaling and art channel and if you haven't subscribed yet please consider subscribing because i will be making more of these awesome relaxing just chill journal with me with that being said let's get into the video so i have here my archer and olive a5 dog grid notebook if you would have seen my 2021 notebook lineup you would have known that i decided on this book for my bullet journal next year if you wanted to know more about it, I would check out that video since I also do a pen test and I go over the details of this notebook pretty heavily. But um, just real quick, this is an A5 dot grid notebook with a sort of a linen cover. You have two page markers here, one with a charm, one without one, an elastic band to keep your notebook shut when you start filling it with all your wonderful memories, a pen loop, to store your favorite pen. There is a pocket in the back and the pages are 165 GSM and you get 165 pages. There's also an option to have a thicker notebook but I didn't opt for that since I don't think I will be filling my journal to the brim in that sense. But anyways, I decided on this notebook because of the fact that the paper is a little bit heavier weight and I want to do more watercolors next year. So I wanted a paper that could withstand all the different types of media because I have paint, I have glitter paint, I have markers, I have a whole bunch of stuff that I want to use in my bullet journal next year. Before we get started, I just want to remind everybody that all of the supplies that I'm going to be using in this video will be linked in the description below. So here's just a quick snapshot of everything that I have. I have some stamps, I have a pouch full of markers, pens, gel pens, pencils, binder clips for you know, holding pages open, stamp blocks, washi tapes, you name it. I have a whole bunch of things that I'm going to be listing in the description box below. And I also will have Amazon affiliate links that give me a little bit of kickback when you guys decide to purchase some of these items. Okay, that about wraps up the introduction. Let's get right into planning my bullet journal. I'm gonna start by going through all of the spreads individually and taking you guys through each one of them in greater detail, but I'll be doing so in a voiceover. So relax and enjoy some calming music and the editing version of Cami. Take it away. Hello and welcome to my studio. I am the editing version of Cami, which just means I'm recording this voiceover on top of my already edited video. Before this, I was kind of just recording the footage and talking through it, but now I can actually put the video together and narrate over it, similar to like a director's cut, if you guys watch that. I think that's like back in the DVD days and they don't do director's cuts anymore, but I digress. Um, I'm excited because I can now take you guys through all of my spreads and explain what I'm doing and why I decided to do it. So if you guys are not interested in hearing me ramble about it, you're more than welcome to turn down the audio and listen to your own music, but I promise I won't be rambling throughout the entire video because I do enjoy some journaling ASMR as well. 
So starting with the very first page of my notebook, since this isn't a full spread anyway, I decided to draw the cover page here and I am illustrating a eucalyptus stem, which is the design that I am using throughout all of the other pages. I'm also sticking with a singular color palette of olive green and metallic gold. I tried really hard to keep a simple and clean look throughout these spreads, but you're going to see later that I go overboard yet again with my decorating. I can't seem to stop, but I feel like it's because I'm just rusty in general. I took a hiatus for the past couple years because I was going through infertility treatments. Back in 2017, I had my first miscarriage and that put me through a really dark, dark, deep depression phase. I quit slash lost my dream job. It was just a really, really sad time for me and journaling and art really helped me through that. I suffered another miscarriage and started doing IVF, which is in vitro fertilization. So I wasn't able to be there mentally to journal or do art or make videos anymore. I was really focused on myself and my health. And I'm happy to report that in this year, I had my son in July. So it took two miscarriages and three IVF transfers, but I finally have my baby boy. And I also was able to um, get a new job and start a new career. We bought a house in March. So 2020 was actually, despite the global pandemic, was a good year for us. Which is why for next year, I decided my word of the year was going to be thrive. I wrote that in a very loose handwritten cursive font next to the actual year 2021. And I picked that word because I felt like I struggled enough and I barely survived in the last couple of years. So I want to continue the blessings that I've had this year into the next one and that's why I chose thrive and I even wrote down the definition which is to grow or develop well or vigorously prosper and flourish right now I am pulling out a couple colors from my watercolor collection I have the forest green Sennelier color as well as other da Vinci greens as well um, Sennelier is a French brand and da Vinci is a local California US based brand and these colors work really well with the green that I was thinking of I'm using a porcelain palette that I got off of Amazon and I find that porcelain works really well with watercolor because you have a really cleaner mix with some of the paints and it's really easy to clean. As you can see in the palette here, I am mixing the paint and the water and it doesn't beat up at all. So porcelain is just really nice when you're working with watercolor. And when I lay down that first layer of paint, I'm noticing that the Archer and Olive paper does not react as nicely as I would like mainly because the water just kind of sits on top of the paper and it doesn't quite absorb it. I know that Archer and Olive has thicker paper and it handles paint really well, but I think that's all it does is it handles it well. It doesn't really have the typical watercolor look. So I had to kind of adjust to that and really be careful with how much water I was using because they tended to just pull on top of the surface of the paper. Anyways, I'll let you guys take a look at the watercoloring with some music and just keep an eye out on how the watercolor reacts to it because you'll see what I mean. But I'll stop talking for now and you guys can enjoy some lovely relaxing music. Thank you. 
right about here is where I feel like I messed up. I really wish I stopped because this is like the perfect cover page, but I decided to add some paint splatters, which looks really good in some paintings, but I think the dot grid kind of muddies it up a little bit. Now I'm going in with a gold gel pen to draw more plants behind the eucalyptus leaf and I saw this on Pinterest and I really liked the contrast of a dull green with a bright gold paint so I tried doing my own version of it but I just wish I went smaller with the plants. I think I went too large so it's really distracting and of course I added more paint which didn't look too bad. I like the look of the subtle shininess of the watercolor um, even though it's metallic gold. Once the water dries it really dulls it down a little bit so I liked the look of it but I think the plants were just too big and of course I couldn't resist and I continue with my paint splattering effect and it just really looks a little bit messy. I wish I was more controlled in where I splattered that paint especially with the gold since when the gold beads up it's really bright but that's okay. I'm not too upset with the way it turned out. I just wish I was a little more restrained with it. But let me know in the comments if you prefer the clean look or if you liked what I ended up with. I'd love to know because I feel like I should have stopped at some point and didn't. But maybe I'm just paranoid. Anyways, here's the final cover page with a couple pieces of washi tape to balance out the rest of the page. The next spread is going to be a grid spacing page as well as a key. For the grid spacing, I left it pretty open. I don't really know what type of layouts I'm going to be doing throughout the year, so I did just your basic split in horizontal and vertical as well as three columns, both horizontal and vertical as well. I think I'm going to add some calendar markers eventually when I figure out the style that I want to go with, but I figured this would be good for now. I decided to go with a key page this year because I don't really have a system locked down yet that I'm happy with. I'm sticking to the normal bullet journal dot for task and crossing it out when it's completed. It's just pretty basic, but I do want to play around with events, appointments, and meetings. I have a lot of meetings, especially because I work from home, and since I had my son, I have a lot of doctor's appointments, so I want to try a few different keys for that. But talking a little bit about this design, I'm adding the eucalyptus stem and just a disclaimer, I get really messy towards the end drawing the stem because I just kind of run out of ideas. I think in the future I would print out some references so I can have a bunch of different plants to look at, but I think that having to come up with it on the fly while recording is kind of why they look a little weird. But I started to stamp out the word key above this little box and I erased the pencil lines because I'm going to go in with paint. And honestly, I think I like the minimal look again with this. There is a tad bit of extra decorations that I add towards the end, but I'm not really upset about it. Apologies for the lighting. I recorded this video in a span of I think a week and a half. It was just kind of crazy with work and the holidays, but it's a little bit dark in the shot and I noticed it just now. 
Anyways, I'm writing out the bullets that I'm going to be using. Again, it's just pretty simple, a dot for task, X for complete, and if I started a task, I'll have one line through it, and the rest is pretty self-explanatory. I'm now adding the accent color of the gold with a gold gel pen. This is what I mean by having smaller plants. I think if I would have done that in the cover page, it would have balanced out nicely. And again, I go crazy with the decoration because if I would have just stopped here, I think I would have achieved the simple look that I was going for, but I couldn't keep the pen down. I had to pick up a marker and add more sparkles, but it doesn't look too bad. I think I start getting the hang of when to stop as the video goes on. The next spread is my resolution spread. I'm not going to have a set of resolutions at the start of the year. I think I'm going to have this couple pages a bit more free flowing. So if I decide to stop eating meat in March, I have the ability to add that. Or if there's a resolution that I want to adjust or change, I think this will help me stick to it a little bit more if it's not as rigid. That's kind of why I like the bullet journaling system is because you could do whatever you want, however you want, whenever you want. After I stamped the word resolutions at the top of the page, I color in these squares with a, a Tombow marker, the same marker that I've been using for the previous spreads. And I'm trying to mimic the look of washi tape here. It's actually something I had an idea of and I really loved how it came out. So I'm probably gonna do this a little bit more in the other spreads because it was really easy to do. And I wrote this year I will underneath the header because that's kind of what this page is for and it's really not anything special. I just want a place where I can put down the things that I want to accomplish in the year and have no real rules about it. Just have a free space that I can keep track of all that. Moving on to the next spread, it is my year in photos spreads. So I haven't really done this before. I think in my first bullet journal, which is the only bullet journal I've actually completed, I had sort of a scrapbook collage at the end of each month, but I couldn't really keep up with it. It was really hard to have that consistency and the time. So I wanted to try something a little bit different where I could at least post one photo in my bullet journal every month. A photo that kind of sums up the month maybe or my favorite photo, whatever it is. So I have a Canon IV mini printer and I took the paper from that and I used that to trace those squares. I used my stamps to decorate each box. So I had a eucalyptus stamp and a baby's breath stamp. Then I went in with my Tombow dual brush pen to write down the months just so I know which month I'm going to be pasting the pictures on and I know that this is going to end up being covered up but it's at least going to look nice until I get to that month.
The next spread is my year at a glance page. So I really enjoy doing these. A lot of people hate doing it by hand, but it's one of my favorite things to do. And I've gotten good at it because I developed a system where I will go in and mark out where each month is gonna be and also the first and last day of each month. Then I just kind of go on autopilot and I'm, maybe I made a mistake, I wouldn't know, but it looks good when I do it handwritten, so that's why I prefer doing it. But again, this page is very simple. I just use my Tombow dual brush pen to create sort of a bar on top of each month where I will write in the name of the month in a white gel pen. So I made my first big error in decorating this spread. I think I wrote out future log or something, but I just took an old Archer and Olive notebook and I cut out the portion of the page that I needed to cover up the mistake and wrote the proper header or title of the page, which is year at a glance. This is a trick that I found on, I think, I don't know, I can't remember, some YouTuber did this and I decided that that was a really great way to cover up big mistakes and I think I do it again later on in the video. But after I write out year at a glance, I add some drop shadow with my Micron in a 01 and then I think I just erase everything and pretty much leave this very simple. So again, I'm learning how to dial down the decoration and just keep it really minimal. For the second page of the spread, I'm really excited to try something new. I haven't seen anyone do this before, maybe it's been done, but basically I make a grid for each month of the year and I will use that space to write down what my focus is so that I have a single location that I can see the entire year and what I focused on you know, in the month before or a couple months after. I feel like this is a good way to really visualize how your entire year is gonna go. I decorated it by using my Tombow Dual Brush Pen to create a thicker colored border around each of the grids. And this is kind of a look that I keep in other spreads. I really love how it makes the grid pop. And I add my white eucalyptus leaves in a gel pen that I think it's a Signo gel pen but it's really nice to add on top of really dark colors like this. Then I finish off by marking each of the boxes with a stamp of the name of the month and this pretty much sums up the spread. I really like the look of it. I like the contrast of a super clean page on the left and then a really dark border on the right. And again, I add just some extra design, which I notice you can't even really see the gold on top of the green, so I don't think I'd do that again, but this is the final spread, and I really love the way that the numbers look when you have a full year to glance page. It's literally my favorite. For my future log, I decided to split each page in half. This will give me more room to write even though it takes up more pages in the actual spreads. I use my Sakura Micron in 01 to write down, oh actually I think I use my 005 to write down a mini calendar on top of each column. This is a quick 
reference for me so I can plan accordingly. Then I switch it up and I use my Tombow dual brush pen to highlight the Monday through Sunday row and I just use a stamp to mark the top of each calendar which I think is a lot cleaner and I do like how it kind of makes the calendar look more compact. The reason why I go for half a page instead of thirds for each month column is so that I have more room to write things down. Sometimes appointments get moved around so I need to cross things out or just draw arrows to a new date or a new bullet so I wanted more room to do that. And I finish off decorating it by adding some washi tape and some stamps of the eucalyptus leaves. And of course I go crazy with this gel pen. I don't really know if I like the way it turns out, but I don't know. I see you learn as you go along, but this is the final spread. And I think I do the same thing for each of the quarters of the month. So, you know, May, June, July to August and all the way through December, it's the same thing. Maybe next year I'll do different ones. So it's not really repetitive. In this spread, I am creating my 2021 goals page. This is different from resolutions because this is a little more focused and specific. So as an example, a resolution would be I'd give up meat, but a goal would be I will only eat red meat on special occasions or something just to really narrow down what I want to accomplish this year. I designed this by creating a box in the center of both pages and drew larger eucalyptus stems which like I said before I'm starting to get really loose with these designs but I create a box with a ruler just to have a really straight edge and I use my Tombow dual brush pen to color it in. I noticed that the paint that I was using it does bleed through a little bit especially if you have a lot of water so I think I stick to markers from that point on until I get to the very end but I also like the look of the marker so it's not too bad I use my stamps for the 2021 header because I love the way that it looks. I'm really digging the serif fonts right now, so if I was actually better at writing it down by hand, I would do it, but stamps make it easier. Anyways, I tape off the border of the box because I wanted a bright gold border around the 2021 and this was a way to do it without having to use the gel pen because I knew the gel pen wouldn't have that really clean edge that I was looking for. So this paint, which I will list in the description below, doesn't really work well if you don't have a lot of water on it, so I had to really dig deep in that pan to get it out. And just to finish it off, I wrote goals underneath it because this is my 2021 goals page and I removed all the tape and it did give me a hard edge with a little bit of roughness around it, which actually looks nice. Then I go in with my Sakura Micron pen to write in 2021 on top and that just adds a little bit more design. I also section out both sides of the page for six different focuses and these are the areas in my life that I really want to improve. So first I have family, I am going to write down any goals that I have for me as a mom or a wife, then I have home and I also have my health work, art, and finances. So everything in here is just a way to kind of section off what I want to accomplish for each of those areas in my life.
Here's a spread that I'm trying out for this year and it's an ideal day, week, and month spread. I usually try to do this randomly throughout my bullet journal, especially when I'm feeling motivated or if there's something in my life that changes my current day-to-day -day routine. But I do want to try and have something that's really structured for each day, week, and month, even if it's flexible. So the idea is I have the left hand side section out for my ideal day. The top of the page you'll see a week view and the rest of the bottom right is a giant month section. Now I use my Tombow Dual brush pen to highlight every other row but I realized that the color was actually too dark and I should have gone with something lighter but I don't have all the brush pens and I think if I introduced another color it would kind of look a little bit off but I'm planning to use a friction erasable gel pen so that I can change it up if my schedule changes but again this is just to kind of have a place where I can plan out my day my week or my month and I can use to reference as I continue planning in the rest of the year For this next spread, I try doing a master task list, and I say try because I don't really keep up with this as well as I should, but I want to try having a place where I write down all of the tasks that I know I do all the time. So I clean out my cat's litter box, I reorganize my son's clothes because he grows out of them so fast. So that's the goal for these pages. I decorate them by drawing a giant eucalyptus stem on the bottom right hand side and again I get really messy because I have no reference but you can see that I'm stamping out the word master with my stamps and I write in task list underneath it. The reason why I decorate the bottom right hand side of the page is because this is the spot where my hand doesn't really sit or rest well on the page so my handwriting gets really messy so i like to take up that space with with a decoration and right now i am coloring in the eucalyptus stem with my tombow dual brush pen in the same green color that i've been using and so far i think that the look is okay it's really simple it's probably my least favorite design of all my spreads but again this is more of a functional spread than one that is for looks
I decided to section out the tasks in four groups. I have a personal column, which is all of my personal tasks. So this is trim my hair or do my eyebrows. And I have a column for work, which is more for my YouTube or my business, my future business that I'd like to start. And then I have one for home and family. We just bought a house in March, so there's a lot of things that we have to do around the house. And family because I'm a mom and I'm also a wife and that's really a lot of things to be. Now that I'm a new mom, it's really coming to terms with all the things that I'm trying to juggle. So I want to have a space where I can write down everything that I think I have to do <clears throat> repeatedly. And that's why I have this spread. I'm also going in with my marker to fill out the rest of these blank spaces. I probably should have gone in and continued my white gel pen trend with the eucalyptus leaves but I was really worried that I would overdo it so I didn't do it but I might go in later sometime to do it since I do like the way that it looks. In this spread, I actually start my trackers section and these two pages are the only year trackers that I wanted to keep in my bullet journal. Also, just <laughs> noticed that I did my nails. Like I said, I recorded this video over the span of several days, but um, my nails look nice now. <laughs> Anyways, I have two trackers. I have a journaling tracker and a drawing tracker. In the next year, I want to try my best to journal every day. It's really helped with my mental health and just keeping some clarity in my thoughts and my focus and goals. So on the left hand side, I am creating a table which I number from 1 to 31. That represents the days of each month and there are 12 columns for each month of the year. And on the right hand side, I do the same exact thing with the same exact setup, except this is what I'm going to use for a drawing tracker. I'm going to try to draw every day for the rest of the year, even if it's just a small doodle. But I want to make sure that I'm keeping up with my art goals and I think a tracker will help me do that. I decorate these pages by using my eucalyptus stamp and I also use my baby's breath stamp similar to the ones I did for the year in photos. This is just a really quick way to add some decoration so I still keep the minimal look but I make it look nice as well. I got these new brush pens from Notebook Therapy and I really like the way the nib reacts to each downstroke so I will link where I got those in my description box but I use that pen to write journal and drawing on top of each box and I noticed that they're a little bit off which is actually okay because on the left hand side it's just a journal tracker but on the right hand side it's a 365 drawing tracker which I know is pretty much the same thing but there actually is a 365 drawing challenge which is why I noted that and I decorate each of the header with a couple eucalyptus leaves which I curved on either side as kind of like parentheses this is another really simple way to decorate your headers and I finish off by adding some washi tape so that it can fill in these super huge blank spots but I leave the center open in case I want to add something later whether or not I want to tattily everything up and have a total of how many days that space is open for that and I finish off by using my white gel pen to mark off each month on each column header
In this spread, I am keeping track of all the books that I've read for next year. I love to read. It's one of my favorite pastimes and my favorite hobbies. My sisters also love to read, so books and reading is just really special to me. And I feel like I will read more if I kept track of everything that I decided to pick up and start reading. I have a book of the month subscription and I'm super behind on the books that I've purchased, but I really do like collecting them so that whenever I do have the time, I, they're just right there and I can read them. I also have an Audible subscription and that helps me a little bit more because I can listen to books more than I can read them right now. So I decided to separate the left page and right page from books and audiobooks, but I think towards the end I erase or I color over the audio part because I realize I read more normal books than audiobooks, but that's okay, you guys get the idea. This spread is actually something I'm really hoping I keep up with because I'm just really not good with trackers that I have to add a little bit more information into instead of just checking off but this is my social media growth tracker since I started this YouTube channel I'm really trying to kick off this side hustle and have a YouTube channel and an Etsy or a small business whatever I decide to accomplish this year but I created this table in my old bullet journal for something else. I think I was trying to do 20 new habits in 2020 and I realized that that table wouldn't work for that, but it actually works really well for this. So the idea is I will list the social media platform on the left hand side and each of these columns represent um, the month and I will write down the number of subscriptions or followers or views or whatever I'm keeping keeping track of in each of the boxes. And again, I use the giant eucalyptus leaves to decorate each of the spreads and I do a really messy job. Right now I am writing in the title, which is social media growth tracker. I decided to hand letter the word growth and write the social media and tracker above and below it because I wanted the word growth to be the focus since it's not really about social media or trying to be popular or famous or anything like that it's really all about the growth of my channel and my future business if i didn't keep track of anything i probably would get too wrapped up in views and subscriptions and stuff like that and i don't want that to be the focus of the growth i really just want a place where i can see my progress and feel good about it and not really be too anxious on whether or not i accomplished something that i had set out to do so that's why i have this tracker it's really not a place to judge myself if i'm not getting the thousands and thousands of views or subscribers or followers it's really just a place for me to see how far i've grown in the short amount of time
My next spread, I'm not very sure about because I knew I wanted to keep track of my finances and savings, but I didn't know how much I wanted to keep track of it in my bullet journal because I actually use a lot of apps for this. I use my bank app, I use Mint, I use Credit Karma. I have a lot of things that I use to keep track of my finances, but what this page and I guess both pages really mean for me is I'm trying really hard to be more conscious about how much I'm spending and what I'm spending it on. All the apps that I use don't really have a place for me to be mindful about that kind of stuff. So I do a really simple four column setup and I decorate the top with the finances stamp and I do my eucalyptus leaves except in the reverse. I just do green on white because I feel like I needed to change it up a little bit. And I left each of the columns on the left and right side, the mini columns, open because that's where I'm going to be putting the amount spent or saved. Again, I didn't really put too much thought into this and I'm hoping that as I go along I get more used to keeping track of these things and I can come up with a better setup. But I do a really simple border at the bottom of each of the pages just to have something nice to bring everything all together. Oh man, I just realized there are a lot of spreads in my yearly setup, but I promise these are the last few spreads and they're pretty much the same thing. I have a YouTube business and Patreon planner and they are all set up the same exact way. So on the bottom left hand side, I stamp out YouTube business or Patreon and then I write in planner underneath it and I decorate the bottom with some washi tape. Again, I use the bottom a lot for decoration because I don't really like writing with my hand down there. I love writing more towards the top of my notebook. So I decorate these tapes also with a, well, I start off with a white gel pen, but I end up using a Posca paint pen and that worked out a lot better. I'm really digging this white on a certain color look. So I really think I'm gonna use that throughout the whole year. But the idea of these spreads is that I want a place where I can just jot down some ideas really quickly or focus on something for that particular project. I have whiteboards set up in my studio for this, but I wanted a place in my bullet journal in case I get hit with some inspiration or I want to organize my thoughts. That's where this is sectioned out in my journal. On the left hand side I have priorities and on the right hand side is just this huge section for brain dump. I do much better when I don't have a rigid structure for my creative planning and so that's why my pages are set up this way. And again this is the same setup for the business section and the Patreon section as well.
And finally, the very last spread, which isn't really a spread, is my quotes page. So on the left hand side, I leave blank because if I come up with or find a quote that I really like, I'm going to write it in that space. But on the right hand side, I decided to pick out a quote that Maya Angelou has said, and this is actually the only time lapse ramped section of the video, but I wanted to pick this as my quote of the year because it includes my word of the year which is thrive and it says my mission in life is not merely to survive but to thrive and to do so with some passion some compassion some humor and some style and the reason why I picked this is because it really fits with the theme that I'm going for in my personal life and also in my professional work career and my side hustle I think I've gone through so much in the last few years and all I've really done has just been getting by and surviving but I'm really in a good spot now with my family and my health and my business and my everything so I think that if I can just focus on keeping this momentum and really focusing on thriving then I will be a lot happier with the outcome of 2021. And I finish off the illustration by painting over it and I realized that it doesn't look too bad when you cover up the really sketchy lines with the paint. I love that look so it's really nice that I can have a loose illustration and even though I don't feel like it looks perfect, I can cover it up with some paint. And again, I'm adding some of the gold metallic paint, but this time I stick to more of an accent look. So I just have a couple of gold leaves and I think I even add just some dots or something. It's just really simple and it's just to have some color popping. And this is probably what I should have been doing instead of drawing actual golden plants behind it. But again, you live, you learn, and this is something that's always going to be an evolving lesson for me. And hopefully by the end of this notebook, I'll have defined my style moving forward. And in 2022, I'll have an even better setup. And that concludes my 2021 bullet journal setup video. I can't believe this thing is nearly an hour long. I'm so sorry, but there was a lot of spreads I wanted to do this year and I probably should have time-lapsed some of it, but there was just a lot of really nice footage. So I decided to make a giant video and I figured you guys are also planning along with me. So it would be nice to have something to follow along with, but thank you guys so much for all of your support. I have read all of your kind kind comments and all of you new people that have sub subscribed thank you for sticking around i know this video has been late but with the holidays and everything it was just really hard to get through but i'm here and i did it and i'm so glad that i did before i sign off i want to remind everybody to like or leave a comment and if you haven't subscribed already please subscribe to my channel for more journaling and future art videos i'm really having a good time making these youtube videos and because of that i know a lot more will be coming and if you haven't already please check out some of my other social media platforms i'm on instagram and twitter although i'm on instagram a lot more you'll see in my stories i have a lot of behind the scenes stuff and polls so go ahead and check it out i promise i will be more active in communicating my progress there and yeah that's it well i'm really happy with the way that this bullet journal video turned out and i hope that you guys all enjoy watching it and i 
really hope that your 2021 bullet journal setup is just as nice and that your 2021 year is much better than this year. All right, with that being said, I just want to say good night, goodbye, and I will see you in the next video.